Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. For the final time, hi again, curling fans, and look at you, Colleen. And look at you, Mr. Haru. We thought we'd dress up for Mother's Day in honor of all the fabulous mothers out there, not just the curlers, but all the curling fans who are moms and are stuck in lockdown, maybe not seeing your kids, that sort of thing. We're having a party for you. Well, you look beautiful and happy Mum's Day to you, Colleen. You. Uh, it has been a magnificent journey. 28th, that curling show. We had no idea how this was going to pan out. Every morning when we had a show, we would go, who's going to be on the show? Mm. Mm. And, then the curl, show and, and, then the, and then the curlers showed up. Um, and just a short time ago, of course, congratulations to the United States, a bronze medal. And of course, we put out the call. Curling Twitter came through. Tabitha Peterson of the United States is going to be joining Woo! us. Let's get to her right now. Let's get this show started. This no time to waste. Wow. Hi. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank How do you, you feel? This is what a performance by you guys today. How do you feel? We are yeah. elated. <laughs> um, huge relief too. Like it was a long, hard week. So we are just, we're really, really happy and really excited. What's you know, the U.S. doing well? Schuster was looking good at the Worlds as well. What's going so right for your program? I mean, we have every resource we would ever need. I think that's a huge part of it. Strength training, um, uh, psychologist, and really good coaches and a good support staff. So just a lot of resources that we are taking advantage of. Tabitha, we know you wanted to play in the gold medal game, but you shake it off and then you come out here today and you put on the show you did today. What was your conversation to regroup and be mentally prepared for this bronze medal game? Yeah, I mean, we, we wanted to really finish on a win. We knew that would feel really, really good. So we were just going to kind of go out there with our same mindset of just stay stay playing hard, stay gritty out there like anything can happen and just do all the little things right, um, communication, um, and just put some good shots together. Tab, tell me about your journey, you know, is taking over this team as Skip and how how big a learning curve did you have to uh, to do that? Yeah, I mean, it definitely was. We had to shake up the whole lineup because of some pregnancies along the way the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, I just had to, I had, like, I didn't have another choice. It was the best decision for the team at the time. And then just the success that we had in the 2019 season, just, it seemed like the right decision going forward to just keep it that way. So, yeah, but I mean, my practices were a little bit different because of it. And, um, you know, I'm not sweeping as much. So definitely a different role that I had had to adapt to. Of course, your phone is blowing up uh, <laughs> when you win a bronze medal. Um, listen, uh, po poetry on ice. I mean, five for Schuster against Sweden in a gold medal game. Five for you against Sweden in a big time curling game. What is this, Tabitha, for the United States? These fives in these big games against Sweden. Yeah, I mean that was that was just a good end for us. We kind of did some hitting and rolling and kept kept our shooters around so that just put the pressure on them and you know Anna missed her last shot so that kind of opened the door for us. But um yeah, that was kind of our game plan all along just to keep the pressure on them and keep them making tough shots and we knew that it would be close at least. When you see Anna miss a shot and you're never expecting it. What is your reaction as you're watching that come down? Maybe you've even checked your stopwatch. You go, well, this is, this is going through. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's, it's tough. I mean, especially it gets hard for anyone to miss a shot. So yeah, you feel for them, but of course, like we're on the other team. So we're happy and we're ready to, we know what we're playing. We're talking in advance. Like if she does this, we're doing this. If she does this, we're doing this. And so we knew what to play. Um, and yeah, we just, we made it and it worked out. Uh, Tab, just for the record, I never felt bad when another skip missed her shot. <laughs> <laughs> is there something wrong with me? Um, I would be going, Whoa, thank you for that yeah. gift. Okay, yeah. but you're obviously a saint. 
Yeah, <laughs> nice. Uh, Tabitha, it's the first medal for the United States since Debbie McCormick won silver in 2006. The celebration, and there you guys are, but the celebration and emotion as you guys came together at the end of the game really struck me because it showed just how much this means to you and to the entire country. Can you just put into words for our viewers right now how big this is for yourselves, for your team, for moving forward, and for the entire program? Yeah, it's it's huge. We. Um... We are just so happy. Um, you know, it has been, like you said, a long time since the U.S. has gotten a medal at the World Championships. And, you know, we went into this thing with our first goal of making sure we qualify our country for the Olympic Games. Um, and then after that, we were doing it for ourselves. Like, let's just win this thing. We're here. Like, let's we put ourselves in a good position. Um, so let's just do it. And of course, losing the semifinal is um, you know, that's hard. Switzerland played great against us. Um, but then you get you have to regroup and to come home with a, a medal is just amazing. I mean, it's a first for our team too. So it just feels really, really good. Awesome. And I saw that group shot with Lainey Peterson. And of course, Lainey was instrumental in our success way back. Uh, what does she bring to the table for you? Because, wow, she's really done it all in, in Canadian women's curling. For sure. Yeah, we are so lucky to have her on board. She came on board um, for last season, 2019. Um, and then her and Natalie co-coached, which was a lot of fun. And they kind of learned a lot from each other, too, I think. But yeah, she bring, brings a lot of experience, um, a lot of organization, a lot of just knowledge about the game um, in general with her large amount of experience. So we're really, really lucky to have her. Mm, nice. And Olympic trials next. You got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, thanks for the wicket. Tab, if I if I did my research correctly, you're from Burnsville, Minnesota. They're probably going crazy there today and, and probably celebrating all across the United States. Can you tell me uh, how you feel the game is growing? We talk about it in Canada all the time. Uh, and then Schuster wins Olympic gold and we want to see the game grow. And there are curling clubs going up all across the United States. Can you give us a a, a bit of a reality check of where you feel the game is at and, and it just seems to be taking off. Yeah, I agree completely. It's ever, all this is good for curling in the U S you know, we have clubs that are popping up everywhere and getting dedicated ice. And so it's all really good stuff. And I think, yes, gold medal at the Olympics from Schuster's team and, you know, just the sheer amount of like TV coverage that we've been getting to is huge because cool. that's how we grow it. People watch it. They want to try it. So they contact their local club and they do a corporate event or whatever and, you know, join leagues. And so, yeah, we're like the USA curling in general is focusing a lot on growing curling at the grassroots as well. So yeah, it's it's all good stuff for curling in the US. Well, that's awesome. So nice of you to join us. Congratulations on the uh, bronze medal. Well, well Thank deserved. You. Yeah. Thank you so Outstanding. much. Outstanding tab. Celebrate it. Thank you for taking time. I put a tweet out there and tw uh, Curling Twitter came to the rescue. And thank mm -hmm. you to USA Curling and Price Atkinson for making this happen. Yes. And thank you to you. Congratulations. Soak it up and get home safe. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tab. Bye-bye. Safe trip home. You know, we've got to reach out on Twitter way more often rather than the way you and I scurry over morning coffee. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're like, Twitter do the work for us. we're usually going, do you have a contact for this person or mm -hmm. one tweet? Boom. We got a show. Hey, listen, we got a jam show today and we yeah. are celebrating all the mothers out there. What a story and what a show Rachel Holman put on you wow. to about a super mom no uh, and Colleen she joins us now uh she is a busy mother right now in the throes of all of it and here she joins us now uh Rachel happy Mother's Day times two for the first time it's yeah. great to see you how are you I'm great how are you do well, great too. you mentioned before the show that you actually are also in the process of moving your stature of super mom even climbed higher. I actually went into labor the day we got the keys to the house. So that. <laughs> wow. Amazing. <laughs> All right. Well, what, how have they been spoiling you on Mother's Day, Rachel? Well, you guys ruined the, the game for me, the results. 
Uh, we went for a this morning and we're watching the, the bronze medal game right now, but okay. So, yeah. but that's okay. We love curling and we're still gonna watch it. And yeah, uh, and, we're congrats to the USA. Yeah, and Rachel, <laughs> if it's any consolation, Devin ruins it all for me because my internet's slower than his thumbs. And so welcome to my world, I said, right, Devin? <laughs> I, I don't apologize, but Rachel, I was teeing it up the fact and and you know, you and I have exchanged texts mm -hmm. and I've been able to share a little bit of your story and thank you for sharing so much of it. But what a run for you, what a journey. Now that it's sunk in a little bit, how how do you even put into words what these last few months have been like for you as as we get up close and personal with Riot? Good this to is see adorable. You. <laughs> this is what I love about this show. Look who's taking center stage. Can awesome. you say Iowa? <laughs> Can you say hi? Hi, hi. Ryan. Can you wave? Hmm. And is that his jungle gym behind him too? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, it is. That's yours, bud. Nice. Uh, good. It's been it's been a, a hectic for sure month, and um, just fortunate to have the support that uh, I do to be able to to curl and play hockey with this guy. On my yeah. Time and. You want mom to play? Yeah. Here's your ball. You gotta go get your ball. Oh, nice. nice. How's the new baby? And I'm forgetting the name because I'm old brained. Oh, Bowen. Bowen, right. How, oh, how is Bowen? Great. Well, seems like a perfect baby. Yeah, she's doing great. She eats a ton, but uh, that's that's all they do is eat and sleep. And it's mm. been really great. And it was nice to have my mom in the bubble uh, to be able to kind of share those newborn snuggles and um, kind of share that experience and journey with her. Well, this is our Mother's Day special. So tell us what your mom means to you and how has motherhood changed maybe your perspective on, on the game a little bit too? Um, I, I think you just, even as you go through sport and everything and um, you just more and more enjoy the journey and, and the experiences and um, just able to to stay in games more and, and be less kind of emotional like you are when you're younger and um, a little bit more perspective for sure on on just life in general and um, doing your best for for your little ones and um, yeah it's, it's been it's been really good it's been a really good experience. And I think we see the feet of Sean making a cameo there. So hello to Sean as well because I know he's been busy. Um, Rachel, I, I wonder if you have a few thoughts about what Carrie went through and the team went through this week. You know what the pressure of wearing the maple leaf is like, and they battled back. Um, but I wonder if you have some thoughts about what that journey is like. Um, you went through it at the Olympics. You've been there at World Championships. I wonder if you have some thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody wants to wear the maple leaf and and, and wants to be there and, and put themselves. It's, it's so tough because there's so many good teams in Canada that you never know if you're going to go back, right? I mean, Carrie should have gone two, two times in a row. Obviously, unfortunately, with COVID, she was only able to go once. Um, and it's definitely challenging. It's difficult. Um, I think before, you always had some easier games. And if you struggled because you're on an international stage, there was other teams that didn't play as well kind of and, and let you, whoa. Um, <laughs> kind of let you off the hook sometimes, but I mean, the world is caught up and um, when you're feeling that pressure and you're not playing as well. Yeah, bud. You wanna play tricks? Oh, nice. Wow. Show them your tricks. What nice. Color? Is that a dump truck? I don't know, I think this one's a fire truck. Mm-hmm. I love this. He's but a yeah. busy boy. <laughs> I think just, it can be so challenging and the world stage is so tough right now. Um, and it's really a shame that more teams don't come together and, and support Canada and not teams, but just people in general, they're just expecting gold. And if that doesn't happen, they're, they're pretty upset online, <laughs> which is too bad. Uh, we want to try and give our Canadians teams so much support when they're, I mean, whether it's COVID or not, you're isolated at worlds, whether you're, <laughs> I mean, we were in, in Riga, Latvia in the middle of nowhere. Um, feeling pretty isolated and away from Canada during that world's for us. Um, but it, it's just, we need to show more support, whether it's online, fans, um, everyone, they, they try their absolute hardest. Um, 
an inch here or there and and they might got got the buy to to the semi right it's just um that's the way curling is the way sport is well it's why we watch it it's so exciting because you never know what's going to happen mm. um, unfortunately they were on the wrong side of the inch this week but um they're a phenomenal team and um deserve every right to be there and, and to compete and, and try and, and win a medal for canada it didn't quite work out that way but um, I mean, Canada's learning with every world and we see those top teams and um, we're getting more and more data with Curling Canada. And so I think that support um, from our federation is going to really help out moving towards next year's worlds and next year's trials and Olympics. And hopefully at the Olympics, we'll be able to bring home uh, a medal this time. Yeah. Well, you know what? One of the things we wanted when Devin and I set up the show is to give longer platform to curlers to have a longer voice rather than just a 10 second cliche clip of, we tried our best, right? So we thought it was awesome, for example, when Brendan came on or Darren Molding or Carrie Anderson after tough losses to kind of say, you know, in a longer setting than just a Zoom interview. So I digress. When you're looking at this year's Worlds and looking forward to next season, are you looking at your own analytics when you look at Switzerland and RCF and, and Anna Hasselborg of how they're playing or and how you can get a little bit better. Not that when you're yeah. at your level, there's not a lot of room for you to even get better. You're already great. No, I mean, there's tons of room for us to get better. And and I think it was really um, key for us to be able to play in those two slams as a team to be able to get more data against international teams and, and how this new lineup um, responds and how we execute when the pressure's on. and. Um, when teams give us different scenarios. And so we'll be able to look at those analytics moving forward. And so that was really key for us going into trials for me to, to try and get back. Um, and it's been, it'll be really great moving forward into next season. But yeah, I think everyone's gonna be looking at their own analytics and then as well analytics for international teams and Curling Canada does a great job of providing that for us, for all the Canadian teams that are in trials. Really quickly, Rachel, you also took part in our Mum Olympics on CBC Olympics. I didn't. I didn't see how that went. Speaking of spoilers and trying to find out the results, how did that go? Uh, it was a little bit tough with Bowen. She didn't. Uh, she doesn't help you get dressed, and she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't listen. Um, she doesn't quite speak English, so um, I uh, didn't quite win. Pull up the win on that one. <laughs> Not my forte. I think both of my kids, either one, I would have lost because. Riot runs, marches to the beat of his own drum, and, and this one is just sleeping all the time, so. Mm -hmm. um, so. Rachel, when did you make the decision to go back into that bubble? And I, I tell you, I, I thought that sent a message to every curler on the planet that you haven't gone anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I just wanted to see how delivery went and, and see how I would feel after. And I think about a week and a half after um, I was feeling way better than I was after Riot. Um, and I thought maybe it's possible to slide. So um, I went and slid for five minutes um, <laughs> and I was able to do that. And my technical was exactly how it was at the Scotties. Um, and so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll try, I'll give it a whirl. Um, and I mean, we just kind of went in it thinking we can get some games as a team if I'm able to play. If it hurts, I'm going to have to call myself. Um, and so we'll just go with it. And even before she was born, I asked my mom, you know, if things recover quickly or if things are okay, would you be able to come in the bubble with me? And she said, absolutely. Um, I think she thought I was a little bit crazy. And um, she just expects that of me now. <laughs> asking her things to do. Um, but yeah, she was, she just jumped on board and, I uh, was able to come to the bubble with us and my first slide at practice of the bubble, I used a rock in case I fell. Um, wow. it didn't fall, so <laughs> that was good. And then during that practice, I was able to kind of mentally get up to peel weight. Um, you're just obviously a little bit nervous mm -hmm. after delivery and how things are gonna feel, but it was really great. Well, it was a, a spellbinding scene, Rachel, to see your mother uh, with yeah. the stroller rocking Bowen 
yeah. and then cutting back to you as you were delivering those final rocks to win the Players' Championship. Um, scenes and a story that I think many won't forget anytime soon. You're an inspiration, a super mom, an incredible athlete, and uh, maybe, maybe we'll let Riot have the, the last word, but Rachel, outstanding. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Oh, thanks for having me so much. Yeah, glad to have you with us. Happy Mother's Day. Now go back to unpacking boxes. <laughs> yeah, it's really not that much fun and difficult with two kids in the room. No awesome. kidding. Take care, guys. <laughs> happy pass. Mother's Day, Rachel. Thank yeah, you. Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Happy Mother's Day, Mama. Yeah, awesome. nice. Great. Nice. Whoa, yeah, what a story that was, Colleen. Uh, we are celebrating moms. Uh, mm -hmm. I got you some tulips, Colleen. Oh wow! So I got I got one one for you. Yeah. One for my mom because oh. tulips are Mama Haru's favorite flowers, yeah. and uh, I am missing her greatly back in Saskatoon yeah. today. So I, I actually think her and my sister, two super women, uh, out on a hike right now, missing the show. <laughs> she said I'll watch it later, but they're getting in in shape and doing their thing. So I'm missing them greatly. Um, we, you were talking about Lainey, who was so, uh, yeah. so part of your run mm -hmm. and part of this American run in the bronze medal today. And Lainey joins us now from the yeah. Bumpy Lainey, congratulations. Lainey, how awesome. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. That is so great. It's how exciting. Was, yeah. How was that feeling for you as you were watching and you're breaking? It's tough to watch. <laughs> it is very unlike playing. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's very nerve wracking. Um, but I mean, this team has just shown such grit and I'm so proud of them. And it, you know, as much as it, you know, I'm having kittens back there watching them. It's, um, it's just really gratifying to see them pull out this particular win for sure. Well, I know you and I were talking back in Febu February, early February, whenever the bubble. <laughs> whenever was. And you said, watch out for this U.S. team. They're yes. really good. Because I think, Devin, in one of our shows, I listed everybody but the U.S. Yes, which is what prompted me to, um, to say, Colleen. Mm -hmm. I could be scolded. But actually, because we ad lib this whole show, sometimes, sometimes we, I, I need a fact corrector like Lainey, who, by the way, is genius at everything. What do you so, like so much about this team? Why does it work so well, Lainey? I think my favorite part about this team is they're just so willing to try new things. Mm. They're willing to follow the process rather than focus on results. I mean, I think that's a big thing. Um, you know, we've tweaked things here and there, and they're just always willing to try. Um, we don't always stick with it. Sometimes we go back to what we used to do, but I, I just love their willingness and, and their belief in, you know, good things to come. Mm. How did you get them psyched for this bronze medal game after a tough semifinal loss? I know when we had to play in a bronze medal game for the world championship, our, our, we could not raise our desire or our hurt. We couldn't escape the hurt. So what, what were your words to kind of go, this is important? Yeah, well, pretty much that. Uh, <laughs> that right there with the finger. Um, but also, you know, for us, the U.S. isn't always on the podium. And so right. for us, it, it does really mean something. And I think the other thing to our benefit, you know, we lost that semifinal game earlier in the day. And so we had a lot of time to process. Right. And, um, you know, winning a bronze medal for the U.S. Is, is a huge honor and a huge accomplishment. And so, you know, we talked about, not so much talked about that directly, but just about how, you know, we've spent a month now in this bubble, um, right. the U.S. people longer than me, and I've been here for a month, so they were here a week before me. And, you know, we've spent all this time here we spend all our time trying to hone our process and, and just be that little bit better every single time. And we're always learning from our mistakes. And so why wouldn't we go out there and just give it our all? Mm. Like, absolutely, we would do that. And so, th you know, we talk about things like that. I think it says a lot about a team in a bronze medal game when you're able to play to the level 
this team played today. I think it's massive character building. Uh, Lainey, you talked about trying new things. One of the things I've been struck by this team and specifically today against an Olympic champion team, patience. When they scored that five ender, there were a lot of times in that end where they could have played another shot to maybe bail out, but they were patient and they were rewarded for it. I wonder if that's been something you've been talking about. Oh, we talk about patience before and after every game. So, and I'll tell you, patience is not my strong suit. Mine <laughs> either. <Sure> is theirs. <laughs> yeah, it paid off. It was beautiful to watch. Um, and it just kept building and building. And then what's it like when you score five ender in a medal game? Um, it is both. Um, I, I don't know. I'm back after that. I mean, what I said to them, they were, you know, there's some excitement, right? And I want them to be level to go out to play the next end. And so my response was, mm, not bad. <laughs> so we all are still laughing. And then, you know, that kind of relaxes us all. So. Right. Awesome. We've been noticing the Canadian content in these final four. You're, you know, there's three and you're one of them, of the four Canadian coaches uh, coaching international teams. Um, is that a, is that a, it's not a new trend, I suppose, but I guess we wonder why those you you and uh, Pierre and Wayne are mm, sucked back into the Canadian I was, <laughs> I was wondering how Colleen was going to word that, but go ahead. Vortex. The vortex. How do we mm, bring her back? Well, you have a wealth of knowledge. You know, lots of people say, "Why are you with the U.S.?" Mm. And I'm like they asked right. Wow. right right so there goes see that see that brain trust all over laney it's there <laughs> it's all in there that's awesome so proud of you today my friend um and can't wait to see you um see what happens next i was going to say the olympics but that's putting the cart before the horse yeah thank you so much mm, awesome. thanks for joining thank us laney nice to see Enjoy you oh, and don't worry about your orchids now Oh, they have to live at my friend's for another, like, three weeks. I'm off to Scotland on Tuesday for the oh, mixed doubles. right, right. Yeah, Bob and I head there with Tab's partner, Joe Polo. That's oh, right. awesome. So continues. Uh, Devin, you would love Lainey's plants. Well, I was just going to say, you know, we can talk about plants and keeping them alive when you're on the road. I'll, I'll text mm -hmm. you, Lainey. Sounds mm -hmm. good. Okay. Great travels. Lainey, congrats. Thank Cheers. you so much. Nice to see yeah. you. You nice too. Nice to Lainey. see you. Bye-bye. Um, Wow. I mean, there it is. Right. And, and I love what she talked about, about what a medal means to a country. Whenever we even talk about Canada in hockey, people won't even watch that bronze medal game. Teams won't show up for that bronze medal game. But again, it meant so much to this team when you saw it at the end of the game. Yeah, we definitely let a bronze medal go at a world championship because our heart was really? not, not on purpose. But you but just weren't there. We weren't there, and, and and we know so much more now about the importance of the bronze and the importance of the process, and we thought we knew then, but we had a combination of things that went south, and uh, but we couldn't get our hearts pounding enough for it. Wow. And we knew after, we re that, that was a game we regret it for a very, very long time because you should never let an opportunity to learn more about the game slip through your fingers the way we let that one go. No kidding. Uh, we heard Lainey talk about Scotland. I think this is a nice segue to go across the pond. And we're now joined by Bruce Mowat, the great skip from Scotland. Bruce, great to see you. How are you? Maybe, oh. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? You know what? This is just like me, isn't it, Devin? The way I, I, am, I am always push all the right buttons. Is yeah. he trying? Did you get us? Mm -hmm. we we got got you he can't hear us. He can't. Well, you know what? Why don't Close we it. come back in? Yeah, and we'll yeah. we can why is he whispering? Well, he's whispering, but I was giving him the signal to close it and come back in. He's going to do that, and he'll be right back. <laughs> um, I mean, boy, talk about one of the hottest curlers on the planet, isn't it? Like, 
he was just on fire. Wow, what a trip. You, you know, you, you make it to the gold medal game at the Men's World Curling Championship, and then you uh, win both slams. You say it, he's on fire, and he's going to be playing in the Mixed Doubles Championship uh, yeah, starting on May 17th. As we try and reconnect with Bruce, right. we are celebrating mothers today. And producer Sophie has done it again, folks. She's put together a montage, which is, uh, you know, gave me goosebumps taking a look at it before the show. But let's take a look and celebrate the great mums of curling. Watch this. have a family and play sports that you had to choose and you were made to feel very guilty about that mm. and that's not the way it is anymore and it shouldn't be that way anymore that you can you can do both Now, of course, you have to bring me in after that. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we got you good, Jill. Happy Mother's Day. Okay. It's awesome to see Thank you. you. Um, and, and maybe just some reflections on what it means to be a mom and be part of this curling world, because I know you were getting emotional watching that. Yeah, I really, I have tears in my eyes watching that because I think it's so special that we get to do this, you know? And I mean, I don't obviously do it anymore quite in the same way. I'm still so involved in curling and thankful for that. Um, but I mean, you know, as much as we as curling moms, um, you know, and all those pictures, there's a whole support network around that group, right? We can't do it without the spouses and the grandparents or the nannies or whatever. And, uh, you know, maybe we need to say a happy Mother's Day to them too from all the curling moms. <laughs> yeah, so true. I mean, you can't do it. It takes a village if you want to curl when you're a mom for sure. And that support, it's impossible to have any success without that kind of support back on the home front for sure. So well said. How have you been making out in the bubble with all the you know, the situation with the broadcast team, the positive tests, et cetera, and now you're back on. Um, how's it been for you from a stress level point of view, I guess? Yeah, you know what, it was uh, It was challenging. I won't, I won't lie, you know, I had lots of work that I could have done, been doing in, in my hotel room, but it was very hard to focus. And it was, uh, you know, you start questioning as, as much as you're being tested every day, you start questioning if it's gonna show up and, you know, there's, and you can't leave your room. And so, it, you know what, it was, it was, it was tough at times. Um, I had a good support system that helped me through that. And uh, we were just happy that 
uh, it didn't go any further and hope that our positive friends are doing well. And, uh, you know, we're glad to be back here in the, in the building and the last game in the bubble. Uh, super mm -hmm. stoked to be calling it with uh, my friend Luke Coley for mm -hmm. World Curling Television. And yeah, heading home, to, heading home uh, later. Well, I'm sure that Devlin and, and Cameron can't wait to see you back home and hello to both of them because I know they've been missing you, Jill. Um, what do you make of all of this? You, you, we're winding down that curling show, winding down a seventh bond spiel in the bubble. Um, pretty extraordinary that this all happened and you've had a front row seat to a lot of it. You know, I just think that it's amazing what's happened here. Uh, yes, we had some uh, ups and downs, uh, including in this last week, um, but everything has been accomplished, I think. Um, for the most part, everyone's been safe. Uh, those who have been positive are, I think, doing fairly well. Um, and so I think that we really need to give kudos to those people that were involved in organizing this and uh you know mostly from the the curling canada side uh but obviously some from the slams and from the uh world curling federation and uh you know from an athlete standpoint as much as there's bigger things going on in the world i think this was great for the athletes mm -hmm. and it was important to have this done to have these especially the world championships to have these world championships played was very significant in terms of going into Beijing next year. And so it's great that we've been able to determine those countries that will be represented next year. Um, and I think just from a fan of curling, uh, you know, it's kind of helped pass the time, hasn't it? Like, you know, just like I had such a buzz when the Scotties started. I had such a buzz when I came here for the men's world, like being here and part of the bubble and, uh, you know, it's, I'm going to be a little bit sad to see that it's done in some in some way, but uh, happy that the weather is turning at least and we okay. can be outside of it. Yeah. <laughs> Jill, what are your three favorite moments in the bubble or surprises in the bubble mm -hmm. that you've seen, either from people on the ice or, or, or certain teams that have emerged all of a sudden? Uh, yeah, you know, I think uh, the Russian men's team or RCF mm -hmm. men's team, um, I think they were, uh, uh, you know what, I wasn't surprised to see them in the mix. I personally wasn't surprised to see the mix, but I was surprised to see them as high up as, as they were. Right. Uh, you can't not point to Rachel uh, Holman and her story of, uh, you know, uh, coming back. And I, I actually think it was more impressive that she played the Scotties at eight months pregnant. Like mm -hmm. to me, that was way more impressive almost than coming back. Like, uh, not to say that that wasn't impressive as well, but you know, I know some other people uh, that have come back after a short time. I know I was back playing in provincials about five weeks later. And, you know, it's uh, it's not necessarily easy, but I couldn't have imagined curling in a Scotty tournament at eight months. Like that to me is absolutely ridiculous. So, so I think uh, that, you know, it's certainly a story. And then I think the bubble itself has to be the story, right? Like, um, this has been going on for how many days? 70 some odd days, you know? Yep. So um, and, you know, and and most part of me. I said too many, maybe. <laughs> too many, yeah. But mostly, mostly successful, you know. Um, yeah. And, and like I said, the the events have been able to go ahead, and I think that has to be recognized. Yeah. Oh, I'm so hoping though, Jill. I'm just gonna cross everything that next season is just not in a bubble. That everything. You know, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? At least we know that it can uh, happen. At least we know that if the Olympic trials need to happen in a bubble, they can make it work. Yeah. True, but for the safety of, uh, for the uh, economic health of, uh, not to put this down to economics, but for curling clubs across the country that had to shut down and had no income and stream and no nothing, uh, it takes a lot to, to, you know, have a curling club go. So hopefully next yeah. year, just for the sake of the everything else across the country outside of the bubble that 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 happens yeah and anyway, it sounds yeah, like they're getting 100%. ready for practice so we should let you go uh, yes, was, they was, are was, switzerland is just uh taking ice and they're uh, about a minute away from their well, first line you, you are call, you are calling that game um jill where can we watch you uh where are you, you're calling it with your pal there and uh what do you think yeah I mean, I can, i'm calling it with my pal luke here my pal luke, Hi, luke. Uh, Coley, him and i 
Tim and I are on the uh, World Curling Federation YouTube channel, so you can uh, tune in, tune into the feed, the live feed on there. Awesome. awesome. Have a great show, Jill, and always good thanks, to see guys. you. Yeah. And happy yeah, Mother's nice Day. Thank you, guys, and thanks Thank for dressing up. Happy yeah. <laughs> Mother's Day. Yeah. Thanks, Bye, guys. Jill. Travel safe. Uh, we're going to try and head back we're across the pond. the pond, and we're going to see if Bruce is connected. I think he's using his phone. Bruce, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you this Wow. Time. This is a miracle. It's I miracle. know. <laughs> this, is, this was harder than your wins. <laughs> By a lot. We've I made was more this stressed fun. about this one than the, the yes. games. Yay. That's what we like to hear. <laughs> nice of you to join us. And yeah. wow, what's the magic you're doing? <laughs> um, I don't know and it's fun that it's happening and I'm obviously really excited that uh, we were able to play in the bubble and then we had such a good run there and we just enjoyed every moment. Bruce, I will never know what it's like to be in the zone curling and that's why I talk about it, but you and Colleen know about it. Uh, can you put your finger on why you guys had the, this remarkable run? I know how hard you guys were working over there at the British Academy. You had the ice, you were training hard. But what is it? Because you made a lot of it look easy. Uh, it's hard to kind of, like tell you. I, I honestly, um, I think it's just all the hard work that we were putting in over uh, the COVID time. We obviously had that big disappointment where we didn't get to play the World Championships in Glasgow. Um, and that kind of spurred us on to really try and make another World Championship. And um, there was that added pressure of trying to get the Olympic berth. And then um, obviously you love to play in the slams when they come around anyway. So like every single time we stepped onto the ice there, we were motivated to win a game and hmm. like we won a lot of them. So <laughs> yeah, it really worked for us. <laughs> so many people were worried about rust um, and lack of play leading up to the bubble. Um, so how, when you look at your performance and all you did was train and practice and work out and sleep, I guess, um, how do you take that information going forward? That, that for some reason there was no rust, you were just amazing. So how do you, do you approach a, a year differently based mm. on what you just saw yourself do? Yeah, I think that's going to be an interesting conversation next year. Uh, we obviously normally in um, a normal season, we would travel a lot and then we're coming back. We've got maybe a week, maybe even three days of training before we leave again for another competition. And um, this time, just because we were training so consistently, um, five days a week, uh, we had a really good structure in place. And then when it came to the championships, we obviously were able to perform. So. Um, it's definitely something that we'll probably sit down and have a chat about as a team and maybe as a program as well to uh, see what we're going to do differently if we need to do anything differently. But yeah, yeah. it'll be a good conversation. Yeah, because could less be more? Mm. Yeah, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. This is a philosophical debate now, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but before we get there, there's more curling, I think, exactly in a week from now. Uh, when do you head? Are you in quarantine or because you're already there? Do you have to do it? What What's the lead up for you, Bruce, uh, as you get ready for Mixed Doubles Worlds? Um, so I have a COVID test or a lateral flow COVID test to do today. I have another one on Tuesday and then I leave on Wednesday and then I get a COVID test when I arrive in Aberdeen. Right. Um, so I've got quite a lot of COVID tests, but I'm not isolating right now. I'm still training. I've got training tomorrow and Tuesday before I head up. Yeah. Uh, and then I think Jen, my mixed doubles partner, just got back today. So I'm not sure if she's coming to training, but she was texting me saying that she might, which is unbelievable if she is. I mean, kudos to her for doing that. But yeah, um, yeah that's kind of my plans. And we've got to isolate for three days when we arrive in Aberdeen. Well, I don't know if it's a lot different in Scotland, but there's not a lot going around. So uh, in, in terms of a life, so if she can go practice. I could see why she would just be itching, itching to go. How do you adjust your style or your mindset for mixed ups? Um, well, for me, it's sweeping, I guess. I've got to actually do something, um, <laughs> which is <laughs> going to be fun. I'm really excited. I love um, mixed doubles. I think that it, for me, it brings a whole new energy to the game. I'm, um, obviously moving around a lot more. I'm kind of getting up, sweeping my own stones, sweeping gens at, some, at points. And um, 
as a skip, I always love angles and kind of strategy like that. So uh, when mixed doubles has so many stones in play and trying to figure out all the angles, it's it's really exciting for me. So I'm, I'm absolutely buzzing to play another world championship. Okay, uh, it is Mother's Day, Bruce, and I don't know if we got the photos, but because I follow you on social media, I saw the wonderful setup your mom had waiting for you in your house when you got back. Can you describe it for us? Because it was beautiful. She's so darn proud of you. Tell us about your mom and what she means to you. Okay, uh, so I was obviously away for five weeks, so I gave my mom uh, keys to my house to make sure it was okay and like she looked after all and then when i arrived back all the curtains were closed like everything looked a bit kind of like quiet and a bit awkward and shady so i walked in the door and like the place was full of balloons um she had uh, a bottle of prosecco flowers like uh, it was just yeah it was so nice to kind of have this um moment of surprise and uh yeah, I, I can't thank her enough. She's obviously an amazing uh, mum to me, so, um, and I love her to bits. Nice. Or a grit, did you say? Love her to bits. Oh, love her to love bits, okay. I lost something. <laughs> <laughs> I just lost a little bit. Listen, okay, everybody's talking about, well, at least I'm talking about it, maybe not everybody, but if it's just me, then that's enough. Um, about the way you guys throw the rock in the rotation, do you think everybody's gonna be picking up on that and doing the, uh, you know, the Team Scotland Moet uh, Spinorama <laughs> delivery. Um, I think people might try it. I don't mm. know if it's, we're technically, uh, we just do it as like all four of us do it because we want to throw the rock the same. We don't mm -hmm. uh, necessarily seeing it being a better release than um, any other. So people will probably try it, see what they, they think about it. Um, I think we're quite fortunate in the, like we have four great players and four like right positions, I think. And that's yeah. uh, hopefully the reason that we were winning these events. I don't think it was because we were doing anything different to any teams. Last quick question before we let you go, Bruce, because the sun is setting in Scotland. Um, how are you going to remember this crazy pandemic time? Um, it, it has obviously been quite successful for you, but how are you going to remember it when you look back on all of this? Uh, well, I'll look back on it quite fondly, obviously, like the the world silver is going to be something that well, I'll remember for a while. Um, and then two slams, including the players, which mm. I think I said at the time is just, um, it's like a goal that you set yourself mm. as a young man, uh, trying to aspire to be all these amazing players that are on that trophy already. So um, it will be a bit of a, a crazy look back when I'm maybe older and kind of trying to remember what it was like. But um, yeah, I'm so glad that it happened. Unreal. Unreal. You've done so well. You should be so yeah. proud. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Good of you to join us today. Yeah. Thanks yep. for having me. Yeah. Good. Glad we got that connection across the pond. <laughs> Yeah. He, he was always he, he was uh, the skipper was always going to figure it out. Bruce, it's so good to see you. Take care. Uh, good luck in mixed doubles. Thank you. Yeah, I'll catch you later. Awesome for sure. Thanks, Bruce. Uh, let me tell you a quick story. When I went to cover Men's Worlds in Lethbridge, mm -hmm. I'm uh, we took this little fly plane into into Lethbridge. I hear this Scottish Scottish accent from a man. Uh, we take a cab together, get talking. Sure enough. It's Bruce's dad, him and I <laughs> meet each other. So I've met Bruce's dad, I haven't met his mom, but she sounds wonderful. And what a day to celebrate and call. Mm -hmm. this, is it. this is it. Or is it? <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> this has been so much fun and mostly because of the um, uh, fabulous curling fans. And we thank you for uh, supporting the show and being with us and it's just it's this has been just such a fun pandemic uh from our basements uh project and uh producer self has done just an amazing job falling in love with the roaring game as well so and the curlers have made themselves so available and accessible and that has just been a dream to create a platform where they can uh, uh talk in longer form and talk to the fans we love it 
We started February 19th. We had no idea how this was going to unfold. And here we are on May 9th on Mother's Day with just one draw left, a gold medal game at the Women's World Curling Championship, Switzerland versus a Russian Curling Federation. It's been a great granite odyssey. And Colleen, I wouldn't have wanted to do it with anyone else. Oh, right back at you. A great, what did you just say? A great granite odyssey? Um, and <laughs> I guess I did whiteboards, but what's the point? We know what's got to happen here. And I'll tell you, um, boy, RCF in Sweden, that was like a gold medal game as well. And now with Switzerland RCF. So until the next time, Devin. Good luck and good curling. Yes. Thank awesome. you, Thanks, Soph. Thank you, Soph. Take care, curling fans. That's a wrap. That's a wrap. <laughs>